Heavenly Father, my King, my Lord, I truly honor you today. I bless you. I thank you. I value you with all of my heart and all of my soul and spirit. I'm so grateful to be yours. I come here today to bless you. Hungry, ready to eat. I've been praying. I'm expecting for the answer to manifest. I've been crying out, demanding the deliverance to break out. I release your power to everyone. I release your glory to everyone. I release your truth to everyone. I release your splendor to everyone. I demand healing in our bodies. I release the fire of Yahweh into our midst, into our minds. I break every satanic chain off of our lives. I destroy every demonic. I abolish every evil. I crush every altar of darkness. I cut every root out, every seed of discontent, every seed of slander, every seed of lust, every image, every spirit, every relational tie, every soul tie to lust, to evil, to hatred, to darkness, to worry, to fear, to wonder. I break its tie. I take the sword of the spirit and I cut through every demon standing in our pathway every power and principality, I release the might of God to strike them. And I put them in their place under the feet of Jesus. We claim your glory. We claim your splendor. We claim your power. We claim your beauty. We claim your joy. We claim your happiness. We claim your peace. We ask you to release yourself today, release your presence, release your miracles, release your wonders, release your freedom, release your flow. Let us feel your presence. Let us feel your glory. Let us experience you in a supernatural way. Let us enter into a new realm, a new dimension. Let the prophetic activate. I activate. I tap into it. I activate the prophetic. I activate the apostolic. I activate the knowledge. I activate the wisdom. I activate the destiny. I stir up the gifts within inside of us. I release the angels of harmony. Holiness, power, breakthrough, gladiators, champions in the spirit to fight against demonic powers. And as the word of the Lord is released and as we pray and just worship and testify and share and teach and do all the above, begin to move throughout the nation, throughout the city, throughout the world. I declare lives will be touched today. Our city will be changed wherever your location is. The fire of God locates you now. Burn you up for the glory of his kingdom. I love you, Lord. I thank you for life. I thank you for this day. I thank you that I have a tongue. I'm going to use it to its full capacity to worship. I thank you that I have eyes. I'm going to use them to visualize your glory and to see as much as I can. I thank you that I have hands. I'm going to labor in the spirit. I'm going to use swords. I'm going to use battle axes. I'm going to use tools. I'm going to use allen wrenches. I'm going to use a spear. I'm going to capture fish. I'm going to capture regions. I'm going to capture territory. I thank you, Father, that I have feet. I'm going to walk. I'm going to run. I'm going to jump. I'm going to hike. I'm going to use everything to and excel in its ability for your glory I'm gonna run for you I thank you how you make me feel your presence is real you are alive I ask that you would stand up in the congregation of the mighty today as we proclaim and glorify and testify of your holy name Jesus Yeshua let music come to us let sound come to us let opportunity come to us let awakening come to us, enlighten our eyes, let new favor come upon us, let refreshment in the spirit come upon us, let new dimensions come upon us, let new angles and perspective of your face and your appearance come upon us, let us have an encounter today as we tap in. I thank you for the joy that you give us. You make me feel, Lord, more, you make me feel better, you put gladness in my heart. More than when they whine and their riches increased. You place favor in my hand. Everything I touch prospers. It turns to gold. It turns to increase. It turns to beauty. It turns to harmony. Every word I speak out of my mouth, it takes place. It is established in the realm of the spirit. I think and I am. Thank you for your word. 
I lift up your word, King Jesus. I magnify your word. I exalt your word. I bless your word. I yield to your word. I submit to your word. I honor your word. I thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood. I drink that blood. I eat your flesh. Thank you for laying your life down. I pick up my cross. I give up all this money, American dream, this house, my phone, my job, my clothes. My family. I give it all up, Lord, because I know that what you got is infinite times greater. I pick up my cross today. I devote my life to you. I devote my marriage to you. I devote my relationships to you. I devote my future to you. I devote my children to you. I devote this generation to you. I devote my son to you. I devote this home to you. I devote this neighborhood to you. I devote this city to you. I devote this region to you. Thank you for the gift of prayer, the gift of intercession, the gift of speed, the gift of light, the gift of sound. Thank you that my eyes can behold. Thank you for the gift of peace and joy and happiness and excitement and passion and zeal and all these heavenly aromas. Thank you for the gift of smelling. So we thank you, Lord, intensify everything we have. Intensify our life. Intensify the pleasure we feel. Intensify the joy we carry. Intensify the anointing we have. Intensify the joy. Intensify the strength. Intensify the power. Intensify the rhythm. Intensify the declaration. Intensify the prophetic words that are being uttered. I give you all the glory today. My soul gives you all the glory. All my accomplishments were because of you. All my triumphs in this life are because of you. All my victories in this life are because of you. You were the sword that cut the head of Goliath off. You were the power and you were the rock and you were the momentum and you were the build and you were the speed and you were the stasis and you were the existence before time ever began and was created. You are the creator. You are my reward -er. You are my free tum. You are my reason. You are my defender. You are real, not a pretender. You crush demonic powers under your might. You rise up and fight for me. You meet me and approach me in stillness and silence. You speak loudly to me. I thank you for this room. I thank you for this tabernacle. I thank you for this holy sanctuary. I thank you that I'm on a boat just canoeing and rowing in the waves and the splendor of your glory. Like on a roller coaster ride in my emotions and you're just overwhelming me. Let your word be true today. Let the power of your word manifest today. For you shall overtake us with blessing. We went through fire. We went through water. We went through thunderstorms. But you brought us into a wealthy place. You have spoken according to our life and it must take place. You will perform the thing and the purpose that you have set upon us. We praise you today. We bless you today. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would give us a desire to read, a desire for wisdom, a desire to grow, a desire to sow, a desire to go so deep, a desire to speak in our heavenly language for 50 hours nonstop, a nonstop anointing, a 24-7 stream anointing. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open. We knock on the gates of opportunity open. We knock on the realms of purity, open. We knock on the doors of visitation, open. We knock on the gates of the hallways of Shekinah, open. We knock on new dimensions, we knock on new gateways, new pathways, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Infuse our prayer with fire. Infuse our prayer with electricity. I release the electricity of God to you. Yes. Let our voltage increase in the spirit. Let our capacity increase in the spirit. Let our understanding of the resurrection power and the development increase in the spirit. Amen. All your promises are yes and amen. Amen. We release your promises. We release your promises into your life. We claim every covenant blessing. 
angels are showing up. We claim every covenant blessing. We claim everything that was spoken over our life. We claim and release our inheritance. We claim our land, our economy, our business, our entrepreneurial spirit. We claim it all in full measure. The wealth of the wicked, it comes to us now. That treasure they have stacked up, it comes to us now. We release angels to fight in war and break demonic powers guarding our treasure and to bring our treasure to us today in this Holy Ghost session. I thank you for strength, Lord. I thank you for that beautiful wisdom. I thank you that there's so many diamonds, so much riches, so much to do. There's no limitation in the realm of the spirit and the Holy Spirit. There's no limitation. There's no hindrance. There's no sin. There's no devil. There's no defeat. There's no darkness in your spirit. There's a pure light. I thank you, Father. I thank you personally. I was on the road to hell. I should have been in jail for life. They shot at me. I almost drowned. A devil tried to kill me. I was addicted to drugs. I was dead in sin. You revived me. You healed me. You set me free. And you put me on this mountain of glory, revelation, and power. And now I am in covenant union and throne ship. Throne ship with you, my God. Throne ship with you, my God. I pray that a new manifestation of your spirit would come amongst us. You would dwell in this midst. Oil would be produced and poured out amongst us. That we will walk away from this with a new oil, a new part, a new piece of our destiny, a new part, a new piece of our inheritance, a new diamond in our treasure chest, a new understanding of you, a new encounter that shapes us, changes in you. That your presence be known, your presence be the proof, your presence be the truth. We reel it in, Father. We cast it out. New measures, new locations in the realm of the spirit. New connections, and we reel it in your glory. We reel it in the harvest. We reel it in the abundance. We reel it in the weights. We reel it in the fish. We reel it in the measure. We reel it in the treasure. I just dive into you today, Father, like an arrow, like a, like a professional swimmer. I just dump off, jump off the diving board and I just dive in your spirit. I immerse, I dive in your glory. I dive in your splendor. I dive in your holiness. I dive in your infinite beauty. I dive in your magnificence. In Jesus' name. <laughs> ah, I feel amazing, Jesus. I feel so pure, like my vision is crystal clear, pure. Like it's so sharp, it can penetrate through 750 miles through all darkness and capture all the light in a recipient mode, all in one, just untangled, just uncapsulated, just unboxed around, just open, but clear and pure, and simple. Birds of the feathers, Father, let. Let eagles begin to soar in the spirit and let us begin to see things and let us begin to have a prophetic eye view of this world, of perspective, of your word, of the end times, of your name. Let us understand true spirituality. We don't do religion and spirits and demons of religion and spirits and demons of the Pharisee and spirits of carnality. We don't do that. We are free and we fly in the spirit, Father. We fly in the spirit to a new height. We fly past the clouds, past the universe, into the heavens. We behold all the wondrous things you have created for us. Because we realize you did it for us. You gave this earth to us. You gave this life to us. And we're going to give it back to you with explosive praise, explosive worship. And we're going to run on the continents of heaven and just celebrate and rejoice with one another. Jesus, you are the crown. You rightfully have won our victory. 
You are worthy to open the seals. You are worthy of praise. You are the king of kings. You defeated Satan. You defeated death. You were born holy. You rose holy. You gave us the victory, the power to use your name. You gave us the power to decree and declare. You gave us the power to command and take action. You gave us dominion over this earth. We take back our dominion. We take back lost power. We take back lost authority. We take back every lost revelation. We take back everything that's lost in the spirit. I send angels out to take everything that was lost in the spirit. Every lost realm, every lost opportunity, every lost revelation. Break those devils apart and bring it back to us today. Yep. Yep, buddy. Lord, I thank you for laughter. Thank you for an anointing and ability to make people laugh and to just cause joy to rise up out of their heart, my God. Now, thank you for the ability to speak a word and launch a ministry inside somebody's spirit and activate their destiny just with our words. And thank you that when we speak, the wind carries our voice and it travels to nations, to cities, to regions, and it conquers and takes over territories. I thank you for the territorial anointing. I thank you that it's all there. We just claim it and we take it. We rule and reign in it. Mm -hmm. I thank you, Father. It's not something we earn or achieve. It's been given to us. So all we got to do is walk, claim it, take it, build it, set up shop, put down the tents, gather the angels, call forth the saints. Magnify the magnitude of your glory. You're going to shine down. You're going to shine down on us. I love you, Lord. I ain't never met a woman like you. I ain't never had a friend like you. I ain't never been in love like this before. I ain't never just crying all the time. Just so emotional. Just hungry to come back to you. Just so excited to get back in prayer. Just can't wait to get home. And just my wife is waiting for me. My Holy Spirit is waiting for me. I'm excited. I thank you. I thank you for breaking me from the fear of man, the worry of what man thinks. And you have given me a supernatural confidence in your word, in what I carry. And your voice releases in boldness and very strongly through that. And demons don't like it. Striking is mighty. Our God is treading so lightly. I feel like singing, Lord. The more I pray that sound is released, the volume of my spirit turns up, the more it's activated, the more the treasure and the vaults inside me begin to awaken, the more I just want to glorify and magnify and exalt because I begin to experience and you begin to inhabit that and it just gets more immersive and it gets more pressurized, but then it opens up and just to crystallize diamonds of holiness and all this riches and treasures and pleasure that's in me begins to flow. And now I'm really living life to the fullest. Because I'm letting my soul flow. I'm letting my spirit flow. I'm letting my ideas flow. I thank you, Father, that you are the ultimate multiplier. They brought bread. They brought fish to you and you multiplied it. They brought sickness to you and you healed it. I thank you, Father, that you are the healer, but you are the multiplier. You multiply our joy. You multiply our ideals. You multiply our income. You multiply it in supernatural ways. You multiply our thoughts. You multiply our abilities. You multiply our production. We don't even know how you do it, but you do it. Your ways are past finding out, Lord. According to the book, according to the book, the lips of the wise disperse knowledge. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. The prayer of the upright is his delight. Upright, delight, eyesight. Demons running up in the building, I fight. I strike with might. I thank you, Lord, that we can have a good time in you. I thank you, Jesus. You are the most entertaining spirit in creation. You're more entertaining than video games. You're more entertaining than a movie. When we just watch your display, when we watch your ultra high definition, when we watch your sequences, when we like what you do, when we subscribe to your power, when we 
Just allow you to be our flow. Allow you to 100% be our entertainment. Allow you to 100% be our television. Allow you to 100%. So I'm learning. I'm, you, you just keep growing me in knowledge and wisdom. And I love it. And I thank you. And I bless you. And I appreciate you. And I praise you. I love you, Jesus. Come here. And I come here. I give you my heart, Lord. I come here, I give you my heart, Lord. There ain't, ain't even nobody watching this. It's just me and you right now in the world. It's just me and this heavenly tabernacle. It's just me like Aladdin flying in a whole new world on the magic carpet. Like the Lion King, I'm standing on that thing and you lifted me up in front of the kingdom. This is my son. This is who I shed my blood for. This is who gave me his life. This is who I take pleasure in. This is who I delight in. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Hey, thank you for the comedic anointing. Thank you for the anointing. I thank you for the uh, the creation power you've given us. We can create video games. We can create new things. We can create atmospheres. We can create. We have creation power. I thank you that we can use that creation power. I thank you for creation and setup power. We set a satellite in the spirit realm right now that electrocutes all dark powers, evil views, evil demonic powers off the internet, off all the applications, and we cause for its wealth, its increase, its likes, its subscriptions to come to us. We set up shop here. We set up the government here. We implement the kingdom of heaven and the laws of our God in this city, in this nation, in this region, upon our president, upon our government, upon our homes, upon our life, upon the skies, upon the airwaves. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Wonderful, my friend. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. I pray, Holy Spirit, you give us a new reverence for our God through encounter. I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would give us an unfathomable, vocalized flow as we speak in the Spirit. That nothing can deny us. I ask that you would give us a peak anointing where we can tap into the heights of what is taking place on the prophetic time chambers of God. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would show us the Father's hand, what it looks like, its capacity, what it does, its attributes. Holy Spirit, you are our telescope. Let us see God and zoom in on him today. Let us see the Father and zoom in on him today. Let us see Adonai. Let us see Yahweh. Let us see Elohim. Let us see the I am. I am. Let us see and zoom in on him today. And let it come back to us. A harvest of God. A harvest of God. Let a harvest of God come back to us. Mm. Teach us, Holy Spirit, how to sit back and receive. Not just pray, not just do, 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 do. But we have to learn to receive, 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 receive. Sit back, sit back, sit back, sit back. Let us have more of those moments throughout our day and out of our week. And watch what God can do. Not We know what we can do when we're full of the Spirit. But teach us how to sit back and allow God to do. I like that, Holy Spirit. I love you. We've always been together. You've always had your heart set on me. You've always had your eye on me. You love us. Anybody that's watching, Lord, I just release your hand to grasp them, touch them, uplift them. The hand of God uplift you. Mm -hmm. The might of God strike you. The Prince of Peace touch you. Yee. Got that scripture. Got that scripture. Thy word is pure. More sweeter than my taste than honey. More to be desired than gold. Yes, fine gold. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. We run into your tower today, Lord. We hide ourselves in your pavilion. We cover ourselves under the shadow of your wings today, Lord. In that holy place, that sacred place, those divine chambers, that intermittence, that intimacy, that entrance with you, Lord. Amen. And Lord, we give our burdens to you today. We give our pain to you today. We give our worries to you today. We give our struggles to you today. And you said you would give us rest. We give it to you. And we receive your rest. And we relax from the weight and the pressure. Let you deal with it. 
We get out your way today, Father, so that you can move how you want to move in our life. Move out hindrances, move out demons, move out lust, move out lies, move out doubt, move out all that carnal stuff. Get it out of my way. So my God can flow. Let the trees be blessed today. Let the birds be blessed today. Let the nature be blessed today. Let the cows be blessed today. Let the sun be blessed today. Let the stars be blessed today. Let the heavens be blessed today. On behalf of heaven and earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, where are we at, buddies? Where are we at? Oh, is that where you're at? That's where you're at, huh? I love you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. Let your spirit flow. Feel grace, feel mercy. You're righteous, open discussion, heavenly tabernacle, new commitment, trustworthy applause, sphere where the words are stored in it to release according to the moment, times and seasons appointments, dates. We look at the reflection and prepare for them. Abilities, attributes be released. New form, new understanding, new layer, new thought, a new sound, a newness, let it be released. Yes, let it be released. We explore you today, Jehovah. We explore you today. We immerse ourselves in your realm, in your world, in you. And by focus, by faith, by submission, by humility, we explore you today. We partake of the cup of Jesus. We wash ourselves in the blood of the Lamb. We enter into the Holy of Holies. We come before your throne, dancing, rejoicing, celebrating, singing, creativity, smiling, rejoicing, submitting, just to get a glimpse, many glimpses of you. To let your waterfall flow into our soul. And let your power pour out all over us. Amen. Where we at, buddy? We ain't going nowhere. You're beautiful in all your ways. You're holy, my king, all your days. Take this little heart of mine, take this little soul of mine, put it in the cup, you're divine. We on time. And the Lord. We on time. The presence of our God, we on time. The splendor of the nations, she on time. United with Christ, we on time. You did, look at that. Let me tell you something, boy. Let me tell you something about this Jesus. Let me tell you something about this Jesus, boy. Tell you something about this Jesus, boy. Tell you something about this Jesus, boy. Lord, He's gonna bless us. He's gonna protect us. He's gonna shine on us. I don't know. He 
He's there. Let's scroll through some of this. Let's let's go through this scroll real quick, cause all this that we've been building up, it's all scrolls. And then every time I read, I unfold the anointing, the oil, the pleasure that was stored in that scroll. Cause you gotta taste it. You see, you catch things, but you gotta learn to taste God's glory. It's a substance, it's a liquid, it's a form, you can taste it. Taste wisdom, taste the kingdom, taste the preciousness of Jesus, taste the glory of God. Drink in these rivers of life. Some good stuff, boy. Life coach. You must learn to choose wisely. Ha. There are things that God's been doing in your life. Guess what? He's done with. On to the next phase. I want to show you something new. I want to take you on a new path. I want to take you to a new height. Certain things I was doing that I'm done with. You don't want the why of life on the surface. Make money, be successful, get married, go to school. That's the why on the surface. But you want the why rooted into the core of your being. Why am I alive? Why do I exist? Why am I here? How did I get here? That's the why you want to ask. Why? Yahweh. Answer. You have to align every hemisphere of your being into one goal. And that goal is Jesus Christ. Unconditional, not just unconditional love but unconditional dreams, unconditional success. It don't come with conditions. It's already yours. Have you tapped into the reservoirs of heaven that are rightfully your dwelling place? Have you rested in the mansions of God that is your rightful resting place? Have you sipped in the river of eternal currency that is yours at all times. When's the last time you cashed your heavenly check? Stop chasing what's already yours and start living in it. Start experiencing it. Start producing from it. Start creating from it. You will ascend past the level called success in human terms. Getting, I'm getting good at putting images together, right? But even better at connecting the overflow of the imager. Because Jesus is the picture of my focus, the image of my pleasure. My desire enters into Jesus. Struggle breaks when you do that. When you does that, struggle breaks. When you does that, you here to give Jesus half your heart or all your heart. You're here to give God half your mind or all your mind. You're here to give God a little bit of your strength to all the portions of your strength. Cut off worry, cut off fear, cut off neglect in your vocalization. And that divine power will flow at all times when you speak. Health is a spiritual. Health causes you to feel the emotion of limitless. 
where you can do multiple things at one time. Health causes you to experience the feeling of activation. When you see who you really are and experience what's really inside of you. Health is being overcharged in the spirit. You remember when Goku turned Super Saiyan? Health being in health. Being Super Saiyan in the Lord and the Holy Spirit. Have you used your experiences as a tool to create buildings and dynasties and mansions and empires for angels to dwell in? Have you? Don't lie to me. When God sharpens, when he fashions, when he molds, it doesn't always feel good. If the soil had emotions, and could cry out and you use a shovel to dig deeper that soil would cry out well when you fast when you persevere when you're growing god is that shovel your spirit he's digging deeper because he wants more of you we want more of the father but at the same time the father wants more of us When you produce for the Lord, you're building for him. Your production is a building. What story building have you built? Two story, four story, eight story, 15 story. And how many souls inhabit that building? A thousand, 10,000, a million, 50 million. But what has it done to the connection of life and all existence? Yes. All you got to do, look. All you got to do is sit back and let Jesus drive. If you can do that, man, you're going to travel into eternity. When's the last time you've been on a road trip with Jesus? You always trying to drive. Lord, now, nah, Lord, let me do the clutch. Let me put my foot on the wheel. Let me hold the steering wheel. Let me do the door. Let me choose. Let... Sit back. Give it all to the Holy Spirit. And let Jesus drive. It take you on a trip that'll blow your mind, fascinate you, disturb you at the same time. <laughs> Fascination of the disturbance, ski, fall of the spirit, the union and the harmony, the balance. You must know the top from the bottom. You must know heaven from hell. You must understand the light from the darkness. You must know the freedom from the prison cell. Okay. It's a balance you carry in the spirit that no other being carries. Value and treasure it and see it as ultra precious. Because now you're seeing how God sees about it. And in that you realize how much you mean to the Lord. Do you know how much you mean to God because of what someone else told you or because your heart knows? such a soul level not a surface mentality read a book level i'm talking about on a soul level swimming in jesus he diving in our spirit and our heart and going deeper the demon trying to jack the midnight creeper angels with swords slice that demon up slice them all up slice them to pieces you will not tolerate that. No, you will not. <laughs> Don't mess with me when I'm in the spirit. I feel amazing, my God. I feel amazing. Put your drugs down. Let's go somewhere in Jesus. 
okay? Feel what I feel. Know what I know. See what I see. Be right where I'm at. <laughs> all these dragons we done slayed. All these beasts we done defeated. All these animals and these gladiators thinking they was going to rise up. We was on the mountaintop the whole time. And we stand in our rightful position in the third heaven where we are seated with Christ. We observe the glory of the kingdom. We partake in the riches and the treasures as they feed us, as they serve, as they minister to us. We receive. We are receive. And we look down upon humanity and we smile. And our very face emits the glory of God. And our expression crowns people. And our eyes behold and release the soul of God into people. How for the love and the passion that was set out for Jesus, which is us. God could have whatever he wanted, whatever he wants, but he desires one thing. He desires you. More than anything else. The reason why you have to be 100% focused on God, because he's 100% focused on you. He created everything in service towards you. Nature, angels, life, planets. You were in his mind the whole time. And he did it for you. You mean everything to the Lord. Ha. Yep, buddy. You stay strong because you stay in that realm of victory. You believe in the victory of Jesus. You stand in it. You declare it, you prophesy in it, you shred demons in it, you withstand temptation in it. Now, the experience it, you got to experience God more than all your other experiences in life. You have all these experience of drugs and this life and the devil, so you're not really assured about your God. So you have to experience your experiential, your XP points, like in a video game in Christ, have to be higher than your experience points of this human life until you really just get there. So enjoy the process, enjoy the journey, because we're going to be on it for eternity. There is no such thing as just a mastery level of God. The master is living in you. You're going to be, we're going to be exploring God and elevating in the Lord for eternity, infinitely, for each, forever. If you know that, you're going to sit in the master. Instead of trying to obtain masteries, you're going to sit in the master of all masteries. What you have living inside of you is greater than all the masteries, all the attainment, all the achievement, everything you will ever get in this life, everything you will ever get, everything you will have gained spiritually. What you have inside is greater than all of that. When you said yes to Jesus, you received the greatest gift. Because all the good gifts come from the Heavenly Father of Lights. So every other gift is just a partake, is just a blessing of the giver of gifts, which is living inside of us, the Holy Spirit. You understand? Confidence is a powerful, magnificent, tower height, bulldozer weapon in the spirit. When you become so brimmed with confidence in the scripture and God and what you carry and speaking from what you carry, man. Like in a video game, it's game over for the devil. The end. Goodbye. Credits roll. Lake of fire. Go there. I'm telling you. Hmm. The Lord been molding us, crushing us, so that oil would pour out. He threw you in the pool, then he lifted you up. You broke out of the cocoon, you begin to fly. Threw you at the nest, because he knew you could fly. Put you in the battle to show you you was the champion. Threw you in the ring just to show you you had the championship title. Put you to the fire so you could walk in a greater burn. Magnified you, elevated you, extended you, uplifted you, higher and higher and higher and higher. The more you feel, the more you felt lower, the more God lifted you up higher. The more you feel, the more God elevated you. Because of your submission, you're going to rise. Because of your yieldedness, your trust, your devotion to this, you're going to shine. 
Because you said yes for all eternity. You gonna be mine. Where we at? Well, I don't know where we at, buddy. We in the Lord forever. I'm talking about one. I told y'all. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning. The Lord showing me. The Lord teaching me. I'm learning. When you pray in the spirit, you have to learn to focus on something while you're praying in the spirit. So two things that I've been doing that the Holy Spirit, I'm praying in the spirit, right? But I'm focusing on voice and I'm focusing on revelation two and one. Before I focus on one thing, as you extend, as you accelerate, now you're focusing on two and one. Now you're focusing on three and one. Now four and one. These are the extensions of the spirit. Didn't figure out how God did it, but he did it. So I speak in the spirit, right? And then I focus on voice and revelation. And I'm starting to get in. I'm starting to clearly just get more revelation than I've ever gotten in my life just by when I'm speaking in the spirit. And I'm focused on voice and revelation. Taste that spirit power. Eat its bread. Take of its continents. Take all of it. Man, if God give you a treasure chest, don't just take 50%. Oh, Lord, I'm just trying to be humble. No, you take all of that treasure. You take every bit of Jesus. You take every bit of God. And then you know what you do? You knock on the gates for some more. God loves that kind of, he loves, the Holy Spirit will give you this passion and pursuit for Jesus. And he loves it. He loves it. Man, I feel amazing. I don't know what's going on, but the Holy Spirit is expanding and I'm just expressing. Don't try to figure it out in your mind. Just express. When you're feeling things that you don't know in your human mind, how do you release? You just express it with your words. I shut your carnal mind down. Every, every seed, every root, every puzzle, Every map saving is placed on your mind. I release the fire of Jehovah on your mind and I burn it in the name of Jesus. I don't want to hurt nobody now. I know the power I carry. When we pray for people, they get delivered. When we speak over people, cancer got their bow down. When we pray over people, diabetes, bur diabetes, I said diabetes, diabetes burns up. When we speak, demonic chains break and shackles break off of people. You understand? And we demonstrate this sign. We stay in the demonstration, not the wondering. Well, I wonder if my power is real and I don't know how long. Stop staying in that realm of wondering and start staying in the realm of demonstration. Stop staying in that realm of I should, maybe this, maybe, and start producing. Stay in that realm of production. Stay in that realm of uh, institution. Stay in that room. Stay in that realm of God's word. Stay in that realm of wisdom gaining. Learn to stay in those realms, not these realms of wondering. Well, I'm not as sure, maybe. I'll learn to start replacing that with realms where you're going to get God every time. You're always going to get God. Excuse me, I'm sorry. My human body, when it drinks, it has to, you know. You know. I don't think that happens in heaven. Well, it doesn't happen in heaven, but. Now, one thing you do have to. I feel the Lord. You know, when you feel Jesus, it's not like when you do all them drugs. It's pure. It's the most purest thing you will ever taste in life. The word of God, the spirit of the Lord is the most purest thing you will ever taste in life. There are so many, you know what I had to go through? There's sort of certain things that I had to go through, but, I, but you cannot fail. Jesus, it's impossible for Jesus to fail. You keep trusting in him. You keep declaring his victory. You keep praying. You keep persevering. You cannot fail. You cannot go to hell if you stay in Christ. People go to hell because they reject Jesus. 
They claim to be Christians, but they reject Jesus in their heart. They reject Jesus in their mind. They reject Jesus in their soul. They just speak it with their tongue. But they have not received Jesus as Lord and Savior. That's why people go to hell. And even though God doesn't want it, he'll do anything to stop it. He cannot force it. You have to choose. Now, whether that person, the Holy Spirit will tell me how to evangelize. That person right there needs to see a miracle. That person just needs you to be nice to them. That person just needs you to lay your hands on them. That person needs to allow you to receive humility and allow them to go off on you a little bit. That person, and then the Holy Spirit will show me an intercession, what I need to do to move demonic particles out of the way and to move in on their heart. Conviction will come. The Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit's job to convict people, not us. But through intercession, you allow the Holy Spirit to come into people's hearts, minds, souls, and spirit, and you're changing people through your intercession. Lately, man, I feel amazing. We in the classroom right now, and Jesus is like, does anybody have questions? You be the first one that, if, if God ever asked you, does anybody have a question? You be the first one to raise your hand. You do that, you're going to get a reaction of God. When Jesus leaves, just like when he was walking on earth, you grab his robe and say, no, don't leave. Ask him something. Tell him something. You just, get a, you just got another dimension of Jesus by grabbing on him. You just got another dimension of God by raising your hand and asking him. See, he has all the answers, but we're like, no, we don't want to ask no more questions. It's 12 o'clock. It's time for us to go to lunch. We're on our daily schedule. We have this. We have this production. We have this tradition. So you're not, you didn't realize you just had the opportunity to receive life's answers, but you didn't want to raise your hand. And God does this a lot. He doesn't force you to do anything. You, you have to see it. You have to know it. You have to have wisdom. You have to have understanding. And how to get more of God in your life. Man, I love Jesus. I love you, Lord. I love praying in the spirit. I'm addicted to it. I'm hooked on it. I can't stop. Because I'm starting to get, you know, in the past few years, I've been praying heavily in my spirit. But now I'm starting to get to like a... I don't know if you want to call it a mastery level, but every time I do it, I'm getting encounter, I'm getting revelation, and it's like I know what I'm doing now when I'm pre See, a lot of times, you don't know how to drive a car. So you drive, and you in and out of the lane, you, you, and this is the same way in a spiritual process when we, in Christ, you drive in the car, you driving in and out the lane, you don't really know how to park. Well, it's kind of like that when you first start speaking in tongues. It's kind of like that when you first start praying. It's kind of like that when you intercede. But now you know the gears. Now you know the streets. Now you know how to locate this city. Now you know this hotel. Now you know how to maneuver throughout life. It's kind of like that in the spirit. You learn. So I'm really at a point where I speak in my prayer language and I'm like, and I'm like, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I'm not just, I don't know what's happening, but I feel wonderful. No, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Well, you got to get, if you, if you really want a momentum in your life and you really want that charge of God, you have to learn to get crunk for Jesus. That passion is in you. The Holy Spirit is more passionate about Jesus than anything. The Holy Spirit is the passion of Jesus. You got to learn to lo loose that passion. You don't just wait or, yeah, we ask the Holy Spirit, give me passion, give me, give me, give me. You got to understand while we're asking, give me, it's already in us. You have to release it. That's what I'm doing right now. You don't even know this excitement for God is in you. You don't even know this passion for God is in you. It's impossible for you to be excited, passionate, serve, pray, love God in your human flesh. It's impossible. It cannot happen. Only the Holy Spirit can give it to you. And the Holy Spirit is the passion, is your prayer life, is your prayer language, is your experience. You want to experience God? Don't do drugs. Don't do uh, 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 astral projection. That's demonic. That'll give Satan legal rights over your life. No, you Holy Spirit. Engage the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit loves to be engaged. Gently. You have to be careful with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is gentle. I get violent with the Yahweh. I get violent in spiritual warfare. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, I don't do that. I'm very gentle with the Holy Spirit. You know, you see your wife. You love her. You don't just grab her by the throat and grab her by the foot and just start shaking. No, you touch her hair. Give her a little kiss. You gently hold her. You have to treat the Holy Spirit as your wife. Because your wife comes from God. Your wife comes from the Holy Spirit. Whether it's a, whether whether husband, wife, whatever. They, we all come from that God. So your true wife, wife shit, is the Holy Spirit. Now when you learn that and you start living like that. I don't care if you're single or married. Brother, your life, you're going to walk in so much supernatural. Your experience of heaven is going to be overwhelming. Every second, every moment when you get that. Oh God Almighty. The Lord is excited because we're releasing truth and we're releasing deep things. 
I love the Bible. God, when you speak the truth, his inward parts begin to rejoice. When you speak that which is right, when you speak the truth, the inward parts of God begin to rejoice and you feel it rejoicing in you. That's what I feel in my spirit. God is excited. Oh, I feel good. I feel amazing. I feel amazing. By releasing the expression, it's amplifying the expression. It's magnifying. Therefore, it's increasing its power. You have to learn to yell in Jesus and keep magnifying and keep expressing it. Hey, you all right? I'm stopping the video right now. Coming right back. I'm back. I never left. I never left. I never stopped. I never stopped. <laughs> let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. I remember one time I was praying. I was walking on the street. And you know the Holy Spirit in intercession. I'll start praying real slowly. Lord, I just pray for this region. And, uh, and, uh, and I'm praying kind of wondering and slowing. But as I... Get, when I get headways, which is called breakthrough in the spirit, as I'm interceding, the Holy Spirit will come upon me. I'll start speaking at the speed of light and, and in the nation of the city of the kingdom. And I'll start speaking all these parables and utterances at the speed of light while I'm interceding. And I start like, and I remember one time I was doing that and I started running while I was praying. So that run and that momentum in the spirit, it was taking over spiritual realms and territories of that neighborhood and region. Um, and I remember a car stopped and said, and said, stop smoking crack. <laughs> And I just looked at the car and said, God bless you. Because I was so just in the spirit, just consumed by the spirit. And I ran home and I remember looking into the heavens and I, there was a there was an opening in the spirit. And I, I could just see glory and I, I could hear angels singing. And I, I remember it was so beautiful. I fell on my face and began to weep. I heard angels singing in heaven. I heard the vocals of angels. It was so beautiful. And I fell on my, I, I didn't, I didn't get on my knees. I fell on my face. I fell to my face. I didn't, oh, I need to get on my knees and worship Jesus. I immediately fell to my face and weep, began weeping. I remember that. You want to get deep in that kind of glory where you don't just, oh, I'm going to get on my knees to the Lord. You fall on your face. You get knocked out in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Knocked out in the Holy Ghost. KO in the Holy Ghost. DKO in the Holy Ghost. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I bless you. I praise you. I worship you. I love you. I love you. I honor you. I thank you. I praise you. I praise you. I praise you. I praise you. Don't look. Remember, devil, Satan always trying to get you off guard, right? So don't get off our guard. Don't get off guard. When you pray in the spirit, you stay on guard. Angels stay aligned. Your vocalization with the creativity of heaven is in tune. When you speak in your heavenly language, you stay in tune with the Father. That's why you walk, you don't even need to think, you don't even really need to speak, you don't even really need to wonder. You just walk and you smile because you're in tune with God. And when you're in tune with the Lord, man, you ain't worried about it. I ain't. You ain't worried about nothing. You ain't tripping on nothing. You ain't worried about no oh, money, blah, blah, blah. I ain't got it, blah, 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 blah. Because it's all an illusion. It's not true. Fear is an illusion. It's not who you are. It's not your identity. Lack is an illusion. It's not who you are. It's not your identity. That's why Satan, what he wants you to do is claim, I have lack in my life. I have, you have just claimed against the word of God and you have just spoke who you, you have just spoke out of your identity. Because there's no lack in who you are. You have infinite, okay? Let's keep going, buddies. Don't get off guard. Stay on your guard. There is so much pressure that I had to go in. Don't worry about being afraid to teach or if you're right or wrong. Please, I'm begging you. And you will begin to experience God. You're going to get it wherever God told you to go. Whether it's here, whether it's there, you're going to flow in the spirit. It doesn't matter if you've been doing it 20 years, 5 years, 3 years. When you, you give your life to Jesus, you just come and you worship. You just come and you testify. You don't, you just come and you just honor God and you just come and pray and you just come and admit and be honest and let God do the rest, man. God loves it when you talk about him. God loves it when you just pray. God loves it when you come here and just share. He loves it. It's like the most entertaining thing in the world to him. He can watch the universe spin, all the nebulas and galaxies, but that doesn't entertain him. You are his entertainment. He's got his channel changer and he's watching all television shows at one time. He's watching all of us worship him, glorify him, talk about him. He's, he's so excited about it. Sometimes you got to imagine if you were seated in heaven, you were God. 
You would no longer take, you wouldn't just take pleasure in just universes, just an empty world. No, your pleasure would be in man that you created, right? Yeah. Don't be afraid to exercise your mind like that. People are afraid to enter into the rebuke of the Lord or the correction of the Holy Spirit. They try not to be wrong or try not to get corrected. And by doing that, they don't tap into terrifying realms. They don't tap into unknowing realms. They don't tap into that deep spirituality because there's a pathway where you're always going to get corrected and directed by the Holy Spirit. Because we as human beings try so hard to be perfect, try so hard to be not wrong. And this little demon of perfection that is upon us that we think is good. See, demons come and manifest, but it seems so good. It seems so right. It seems so good, but it completely is carnal. That's why Satan and the spirits of darkness it doesn't just always seem it's evil, but it doesn't always seem evil. It can seem so good, so nice, so awesome because he takes his evil and he hides it and he shows you earth's glory. That's what he said. He showed Jesus the kingdoms of the earth and their glory. He didn't show him. The devil didn't take Jesus and show him hell. The devil didn't take Jesus and said, look, you're going to be with me, this naked, ugly being forever. No. What did he do? He showed him the kingdoms of the world and the glory of the earth and the glory of God and creation. That's what he does with everybody. He doesn't say, look. This is what you're going to get. Look, this is what you're going to have. No, he shows you the trees and the beauty and the money and the success and the sex and the and all that. And it seems so good. And it'll take your soul right to hell. Man, I'm amped up for Jesus, boy. I am amped up for Jesus. I'm going to start making energy drinks. Holy Ghost Jesus Amp. Amp level 10. It's going to be pure. It's, gonna, it's not just going to be physical things it's going to be harmony infused with melody infused with beauty infused with divinity infused with salvation and you're going to drink it in the spirit like let's drink it right now you know when god is really in your emotions you start sounding like an animal there's sometimes when i'm in my job i don't have an option to worship god but you can't talk about jesus I don't have an option to where I have no, there are certain sounds inside of your being when you allow the Holy Spirit to go deep in your emotions and you experience, experience God at such a deep emotional level. You start making sounds like zebra sounds. I'm not being funny. You start making cow sounds. You start making different sounds because all of creation, creation is worshiping God. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm excited. You start making all these different sounds, all these different, these are utterances. So you have to understand there's this unknown realm in you that you can't figure out or comprehend with your mind. You have to learn to understand and know the unknown. And the Lord is just changing everything about my life. Like I thought, like I thought I saw everything. I know everything. I got this level master, and I was just seeing here. And then the Lord took me into a little bit direction over here. Now I'm seeing a whole nother side of God, a whole nother way to operate in the Lord, a whole nother venue and glory in God's word. And then just man, how many dull Christians do you see? They're dull and they need to be sharpened. I sharpen you right now in the name of Jesus. I sharpen you right now in the name of Jesus. They, they say, the Lord Jesus is the only way to heaven. God is real. And they're just like so depressed when they talk in your life. Um, I don't know if I believe what you're saying. You're, I mean, it sounds good. It's in the Bible, but you just look depressed, brother. So look. We ignite your fire for God and Jesus. See, the Holy Spirit is your ignition. When you stray away from God, I don't care what you've gained in the Spirit. When you stray away from God's Word, when you stray away from prayer, from fasting, from full devotion to Jesus, you lose all that. You're not the capacity of God. You're not the one that has the intensity of God. You're not the one that desires God. It's the Holy Spirit in you. So when you stray from the Holy Spirit, you begin to fall off. Doesn't matter if you have a master degree in this, you begin to fall off because the Holy Spirit is your everything. Guys, when I learned this years ago, I have been good ever since. I've not had one bad day on this earth. I've had many trials, many falling out, many wars, but I've not had one bad day yet when I understood this revelation. You know, the devil tried to beat me up forever. This is lame. You don't know anything. Your videos are whack. You don't know. You did this. You did that. And I was really just trying to beat me up in it. And you know, and the Lord had to show me, look at the revelation I have given you. Look at the knowledge I've given you. Look at the power I've given you. Look at the glory. And he began to show me the importance of it and how powerful. One time the Lord said, don't learn to invest in yourself to see how powerful you really are, to see how much I've invested in you. Oh, Jesus, this is wonderful. 
You still there? Who's there? You still there? You still there? You still there? Hey, I bless you. Anybody, look, anybody, anybody that's been here, I don't know, I'm not, I don't, anybody that's been here in this tabernacle with me, watch these videos, experience God, I just bless you right now with uh, just a special blessing. And I just command it to crown you right now, your spirit, your mind, your soul, your body, and your heart, and I just release it to you. Jesus name take it please please take it I can't hold all this in I'll go crazy if I don't start giving to people and start sowing into people's life and start sharing I'm gonna go crazy I said this before you know how you get obese well if you wear in a size 32 pants and you keep eating triple meats Dunkin Donuts Shipley's Donuts and you get bigger and bigger and bigger but you never change your pants you're gonna blow up it's gonna be painful you're gonna feel pressure you're gonna feel you're gonna feel just around you just just tightening in that's what it's like when you don't share God when you're full of the Lord buddy hallelujah Jesus you know there's so many multiple levels the enemy fights you on right but why the enemy is fighting you on this forefront on this forefront on this level God is shifting the gears on this forefront on this level and is circulating you with glory and blessing and benefits and winds of his splendor and even though you're being crushed you're being sanctified you're falling you're trying you're rising you cry out all that is being centered into the circulation of more gears and more activation of God in you it's all working for the greater good he said look he said I'm catching in the scripture he said all things He's talking about universal wise, mentally wise, spiritually wise, emotionally wise, life wise, in your marriage wise, in your money wise, in your eternity wise, in your future. He said all things work together. If you really believe that scripture, you ain't never going to worry about the devil again. You're going to fight demons, cast them out of people. You ain't going to be worried about what he's doing. Well, the devil, he, he, I don't know. They want you. I just, I'm blown away by how far God has taken me. And the only thing I desire is to touch everybody, share everything with everybody, help everybody I can out, wash people's feet, wash people's car for free, and just share, and just for them to receive His glory. Jesus has what man cannot give to you. Jesus has what this world cannot give to you. You can become a have. But man cannot give to you. Man can give you money. You can go out and have success. That's good. There's nothing wrong with that. I love that stuff. I love financial prosperity. I'm a big fan of it. I hate poverty. I'm against poverty. God is not a God of poverty. Jesus died on the cross for poverty. He's a God of wealth. He, he says the world is mine and the fullness of there. The gold is mine. <laughs> the wealth is mine. We, we, we really, really think the devil, like he runs something. He ain't running nothing. God is running the show. He allows Satan to have access. He allows Satan to have certain things, do his little work, whatever he want to do, fight, try. But it's all for his purpose, all for his will. But he's running the show. You have presidents, you have governments, you have demons, you have archangels, you have, you have all these things. But God is running the show. So are you watching what the show, the television set that God is running? Tune in to the Holy Ghost, man. I learned that prosperity is tied to a prophet. It's also tied to loving Jerusalem. So I've been interceding with Jerusalem. I've been having more prophetic voices in my life. Man, when you learn the principles of this Bible, and you, but first you got to believe them. You believe them, and then you apply them like you get supernatural results. When you first start, it seems like it takes forever. It does. It seems like it takes forever. I've been praying. I've been quibbling. There's all these things you have to go through and these things you have to understand. You have to go to first grade. Just like in life, you have to go through first to sixth grade. Maybe you dropped out. Well, there ain't no dropping out of this, Lord. Unless you give up on Jesus, there ain't no dropping out. You have to go in the spirit. You're born again. Whether you're 40, 50 year olds, you have to go through first grade. You, every Christian has to go through. There's no Christian. There's no better. They all have to go through the same process. They may have different weaknesses, but they have to go through the same process. I'm amped up in the Holy Ghost. I got Jesus in me. You have to go through first grade, you have to go through second grade, you have to go through third grade, you have to go through fourth grade, you have to go through fifth. Okay? So don't be hating on somebody because they in the eighth grade and you in the sixth. 
You want to advance. You know how in, in school, there's this thing called tier four. In my school, tier four, where you were actually two grades above your grade. If you were in fourth grade, but because you were got all 100s and you were smarter than that level, they put you in advanced class or tier four. Advanced class was one level up, tier four. So if you want tier four, how to level up, double portion, double speed, learn from people that are advanced in the spirit. Stop hating on them. Stop criticizing them. Stop speaking stupid over them. Stop, oh, they're dumb because they don't do this in the Lord. Stop that. You're killing yourself, you're quenching your acceleration, you're quenching your prosperity. Honor the people that have advanced. I don't care if you like that pastor or not. If he's been pastor in 30 years, you sit down and listen to what he's got to say. He's a man of God. We've all made mistakes. It's just different when you're in a high position of authority. The fall is much greater, but we've all made mistakes. There's not one person, not one Christian that just got it right. It wasn't jacked up that needed Jesus to deal with. Not one. It says it clearly in the Bible. Not one. All that fallen short of the glory. Not one. Okay? So stop comparing yourself and like, well, I did too many messed up things. Man, we all done messed up things. Doesn't matter if you murdered and raped somebody. That brother has hatred in his heart. He has lust in his mind. He's raping people all day long. He's murdering people all day long. Okay? You know, we got to stop. When, when you learn this, bro, you're going to see people differently. You're going to see the whole and you're going to walk. It doesn't matter if a person's a witch, a doctor. You're going to walk in this realm of Jesus. Oh, I feel Jesus. You're, you're going to walk in this realm of Jesus. You're going to be able to touch anybody because you're manifesting that. You're manifesting God upon the face of this earth. Do you know what that means? You're manifesting God in this kingdom upon the face of this earth. We have been given such a privilege. I ain't even tired. So I know we in the anointing. There's so much I have to learn. There's so much to grow and I'm just excited. I'm not rushing it. I'm not tripping. I'm just sitting here just in my God's presence in his garden and holy land, not Hollywood, satanic, holy land, Jesus would. Boys, where we at? Where we at? Where we at? I don't know where we at. You know where we at? Jesus driving, ask him. Jesus, where we at? You eternity. Oh, Lord, I just asked Jesus a question. I literally heard an echo on the right side of my being. Jesus is right there waiting for you to ask him a question. Waiting for you not just to see. You must learn the focus and perspective. We're talking about God right now, but there's a difference when you're talking about God and when you're talking to God. There's a difference when you... Or talking to God, but you don't really see his location. But there's a, just like if your wife, if she's over here, and you're talking over here, hey, honey, hey, baby, can you go give me some of the muffins you made? No, but so when you are able to clearly see Jesus, you can look right in his direction. And when he speaks, you're going to catch his voice. When he looks, you're going to see his eyes. Yeah, I'm crazy for Jesus. You know how you used to be crazy for the streets? Well, use that same craziness, but for Jesus. You know how you stay up all night doing drugs, doing cocaine, just all night? Well, not stay up all night worshiping God, getting high off the Lord, getting in his glory, getting in his presence. You know, when people don't like you, that's a sign you're rising. But when even your brothers and sisters in Christ turn against you, that's a sign. You're risen. <laughs> Remember all the people that turned on Jesus, his own disciples, the Pharisees, because he's risen. So when you people hating on you, not liking you, you starting to reign in the spirit. That's a sign that you're rising. But when even your own brothers and sisters turn against you, you're risen. <laughs> I like that. That's funny. That's cool. That's awesome. Where we at? The Lord told me this yesterday when I was worshiping him. Hallelujah. I praise your name, Jesus. Jesus. Look, look, look. You ready? You listening? Who? You listening? So, hey, look. You listening to me right now? 
God gonna deliver you from drug addiction, pain, anger, suicide, hateful, hurtful thoughts. Serpent's gonna come at your mind right now in the name of Jesus. All right, where we at? I don't know about you, but I get crunk with demons. I don't, uh, I rebuke you. Nah, 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 nah. Demons only obey and listen to one thing. You know what that is? It's not your knowledge. It's not your wisdom. And it's not what you think. It's your authority. Demons ain't leaving your life, ain't leaving your mind, ain't leaving your home because you're not using your authority. Man, I love Jesus Christ. He's so beautiful. I just, I kiss the Lord. I touch the Lord. I wash his feet. I, I'm so in love with Jesus. It's crazy. And I'm not ashamed because when you really die from yourself and are broken from this world, and it's a long process. You finally discover who you really are, what the meaning of life really is, who the eternal life really is. And you become who you really are. And when, when you get to that level, a lot of people go to the grave and they don't reach that level. So to be there, to be there and to be here and to have this, I must help everyone I can. Whether it's making online videos, whether it's knocking on people's door, whether it's writing in envelopes, whether it's building a website, whether it's preaching over there, whether it's giving up all my money so I can preach one night there and win 5,000 people, whether, whatever I, I have to. I've been given so much by the Lord and the only thing I can do is just give. Look at that. Oh, I'm sorry. I want to know what you were going to tell us. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm here. Okay. I'm going to tell you. Well, let's change the sound real quick. Oh, I love Jesus Christ. I've been exercising my, you know, everything, everything you have inside you, you have to exercise. You don't just, Holy Spirit, give me more love for God. We do that. We ask the Holy Spirit for that. But you exercise your love you already have for God. And it will intensify. It will grow. It will burst. It will shatter. It will beat. Bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. How hard is your, how big is your heart for God? You may speak loud. You may prophesy. You might got power. But how big is your heart for God? Because you could prophesy and be a money junkie. You like the wealth you get. You like the fame you get. That's your motivation. That's your drive. That's eternalized in the core of the intention of why you do what you do. It's no longer a passion for Jesus. And even though the gifts are without repentance, you're still flowing in your gift. God still allows you to accelerate and increase. Your heart's not beating for the Lord. It's become prostitutional. Slutty. Don't let that happen, please. If your number one aim in life, not even the prophetic, not even the anointing, it's to love. Jesus said the number one commandment, love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. Love God, all your heart. You already said not just all your heart. You can love with your strength. See, marriages are boring because people just have sex. I love you, honey. In the Bible, it tells you, you can love with your strength. You can love with all of your soul. You can love with all of your mind. You can love with all of your... When you learn how to love, not just by having sex, but in silence and in, in, in embrace and in visualization towards one another and the sound and the mute... Man, brother. Man, I love God. Me on a three-day fast. No food. Don't even feel like it. Don't even feel like, feel like it's easy now. You know, you first start doing things, they're intense, but when that intensity becomes an easy wind of breeze, you have just received a mantle of extreme power. We all Christians rise in the spirit. Nobody's better than anybody. Not everybody's at the same level, but everybody has the same level, which is the Holy Spirit. We were all, okay. We're going to talk about that. God says, the Lord showed me right now, I'm going to give you so many new things to talk about, so many new dimensions, so many new emotions, so many new experiences. The newness is coming upon us right now. You receive it, receive it. Grab it, take it. You're going to be with me forever. You know, the Bible says that God sings over us. When's the last time you just listened? You have to focus in on that word. If you focus in on that word, you'll see the location. If the Bible says God is singing over us, you focus in on that purely and you'll see it and you'll hear it and you'll taste it and you'll experience it. And then it will enter in you. Then you will become one with it. Don't get me started on that book of Thomas stuff. Don't get me started on it. You got to know the words of Jesus. 
You don't just have you don't just read the words of Jesus. You have to know the words of Jesus. Okay, look, I was going to read this to you. I'm not sorry. I'm not apologizing because we let the Lord flow. See, God is so above us, even though he's in us, he's above us. When you really allow him to flow, he's going to be flowing all over the place. Because he's infinite like that. So when you really learn to let the spirit flow, not out of what I was going to read this, I was going to do this in your mind. You're going to notice, wait a minute, I'm going to the right, the left, up, down, the seventh heaven, the third heaven, the fourteenth heaven, this dimension. Because God is not constrained. He's not contained. So when you really let the spirit flow, you're operating in the infinite. Like right now, I don't feel any grip on my life. I feel open. Right now, I don't feel my mind warring with my being. I feel my mind shut down, my spirit mind open. Right now, there is no wrong. There is no chain where you can only, you have to have this amount of money. There is none of that right now in the spirit. It doesn't, it doesn't even exist. All is open and all is mine. All desire is filled, fulfilled right now. You have to stay in this place as long as you can, as much as you can. Because it's so easy to just lose sight of the faith. So easy. Your flesh is a mess. It is quick to take you off the path of Jesus. Quick. It'll take you off the path of Jesus in a heartbeat. Not even have no remorse. Not even feel bad. It'll take you off the path. You must learn to not see. Don't claim. Don't take your flesh. Fleshly lifestyle. You're in a body. You have to see yourself walking in the spirit filled life. Not the flesh. The flesh is melted. The Bible says the flesh has been crucified. You have to see it like that. Oh, that's powerful. I just got Jesus on that. God, you have to learn God has expectations for your life. One expectation for my life, God expects me to go long. That's why I make three, four, five hour videos. He expects me to go long. He expects me to be in health. He expects me to submit to my authority at my job. He expects me to speak in my heavenly language for a very long time. And when I meet these expectations, I get, man, I get what I can't even ask for. My focus is being forged into a hammer of power. One thing the Lord has been testing me, putting pressure on me every time I fast is my focus. And until he's getting 100% focus, he's not satisfied. <laughs> he loves me. He blesses me. He speaks to me. He talks to me. He adores me. He dawns on me. But until he gets that 100% focus, he's not satisfied. And I'm getting to a point where I'm learning how to mend and purely focus on the Lord. In every minute of every hour of every circumstance of every sphere. Oh my gosh. Your health is so important. It can actually catapult the things of God out of you or restrain them. I'm drinking an organic ginger drink, not coffee while I fast. Not coffee while I fast. Oh, I love Jesus. I praise you, Father. Man, I want to stay where I'm at. Whatever I feel right now, I command, I release you to feel what I'm feeling in the spirit right now. I don't care what you think, blah, blah, blah. Feel it. Take it now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I see my wife. I see my destiny. I see my future. I see my family. I see cheering. I see loudness. I see screaming. I see crying. I see happiness. I see saints. I see angels. Oh my gosh. You have to open. Katarela la marra si gitere la marra para movoya. Rosun de la marra va tire la marra pa. Rosun de la marra marra shaka de la marra rosu. Rosi van de la marra akura. Ramador roshi tere la marra skunda ma. Ama don't give me don't give me started brother. I got, I got tongues of fire. I got tongues of electricity. I got tongues that release mighty angels. I got tongues that release, release revelation. I got tongues that release vaults. 
And I know which tongue I gotta use and which time I gotta use it in. Ah, You want to speak in your heavenly language so much until it overtakes your native language. Until it dominates. I'm getting somewhere I want to be now. I'm feeling my God like I want to feel my God. Mm, I feel God. Thank you, Father. I praise you. I praise you. I praise you. I praise you. Ooh, them tongues is mighty, boy. I've been, you want to know why, brother? I've been exercising my tongues more than I've been exercising my physical weights, boy. So when I speak, there's a weight in the spirit that gets released. Okay? We went from picking up a 75-pound dumbbell, my brother. And we went to picking up to picking up a 255-pound weight bench athletic in the spirit, my friend. I went to a new dimension in tongues. I entered into the festival of God. I entered into the festival of God and I began to speak at such a high level in my tongues and it was a new, a new realm of tongues. Remember, speaking in... Mm, I didn't realize it was that supernatural just till right now. Just by speaking that, you don't... The Lord just showed me something. You don't try to avoid speaking in your heavenly language when you come here. No, you implement all the gifts. The spirit language activates the supernatural. It also causes unbelievers to believe. That's what my word says. So what you doing? What you been doing, boy? Now you see. I love God because when he deals with you, he's not mad at you. He's not upset with you. He's God is so crazy about you. He's so in love with you that he's consumed with you. Like he's just, he doesn't just look at you. I love no, I don't think people really understand the love of God because they don't exercise the love of God and they don't stay in the intimate realm with God. So they don't have a certain level of understanding and knowledge of what the breath with the me start, brother. I gained this from a prophet. When he makes his videos, like he makes videos of an hour or two hour longs, and all he's doing is worshiping Jesus. And people are like, who would want to watch that? I want to see the knowledge. I want to see the wisdom. I want to get to the meat. But that's the where all of the meat, the knowledge look. And this is this all ties into see. I just went that far down. Whatever. I don't want to call it the rabbit hole because I'm not sure what that means. And I don't want to dishonor my God. I want to make sure. I'm, but I just went. No. It smells like graham cracker. I keep seeing and tasting graham crackers. I don't know what that means. Let me write that down. Holy, holy, remosone, nanayama. See, so I just went that far in this spirit just to come back to this one sphere because everything I write down here that God shows me is a sphere. When I allow the Holy Spirit to elaborate on it, I can go so far on this one revelation, this one meat. You didn't eat so much steak and lobster. What's left? Well, what's left is for God to expand your appetite so you can eat more spiritual food. Oh, I love you. So there's new things that I'm learning to put on this channel while I'm doing this, while I'm worshiping, speaking in my heavenly language and singing, singing. But the Lord also gave me something new. Um, when I was watching Perry Stone or I was watching preachers last night, the Lord, I saw his hand do this real fast and he lifted me up. He said, start using hand signals like that in the channel and my hand will be released. That. So I lift you up in Jesus name. He said, I'll release my hand by doing that. So I'm learning all these new powers that I'm able to release and it's. Oh gosh, it's double extending. Mm. Okay, but look, this is what I was gonna read. All this came from this sphere. Oh my gosh, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Oh, you always want to start with worship and honoring God. See, right now the Holy Spirit is just talking to me, and I'm just talking out loud. Guys. If you don't know Jesus, if anybody's watching me, I pray that billions of people see this, but 
if anybody's watching me, if you're my friend, if you know me, if we've hung out together, don't be upset. I'm just please just receive in this moment, please. Being upset can hinder you from receiving this. Doubting can hinder you from receiving this. And I long for people to experience God. If I got to give up money in my bank account, whatever, if I got to work a month for you for free just to touch you with Jesus, I promise I will do that. Because I get paid when I touch another soul. The payment that I receive from the hand of God Almighty is much but like, let me get where I can read this. See, now that I'm coming back, I'm getting broken into that revelation. Oh, I love you, Jesus. And now I'm learning in every sphere how to release the prophetic, how to release the open vision, how to release the will of God. I'm learning all this through spheres of power, not just, well, this is the anointing. I'm learning spheres of power. And it's also simplified in the center of my mind. And and this God will blow your mind. Jesus in the heavens, our King is open. We run into His arm, and He warmly receives us. He receives us. Now, I'm feeling something I ain't never felt before. Like the hand of God is like doing this in me. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on, but I'm experiencing the Lord right now. He's putting together the gaps. You want financial abundance, anything you want, it's all in God's presence, okay? Stop chasing it so hard with your own strength and out there. It's all in God's presence. If you want to go further in the spirit and time and your acceleration, it's all in God's presence. So you spend all your energy and time and effort and you pray, and, but you keep chasing. You know, a lot of times we're real good at praying, but we're real good at just using our own strength and our own power and our own might or my manager my job will elevate me when we're so less focused on god we'll pray eight hours and not do anything of god like jesus is touching us strongly but yet so gently mm. into that breakthrough that's a new dimension that we're going to walk in forever Mm. And that breakthrough, that's a new level we're going to walk in forever. Alright, I'm going to attempt to read these now. And this is what I wanted to read though. There's breakthrough in prayer. There's power in tongues but it's all in worship i don't even need to read that again that would be disrespectful because i just released a potent revelation that's a one time jesus spoke three times in certain areas but in potent revelations one time if you didn't catch it if you didn't get it you're gonna have to come back What's that saying? First serve, come, first serve, first serve, first come. It's kind of like this. Kind of, it's like that in the spirit. But you can always come back and get it. Oh, this is for I know this is from God. Look, forged from honesty, uniqueness within. You must learn these two. What's the word, Holy Spirit? dimensions you must master you must wield you must dedicate and you must flow and these two dimensions in your spiritual being not at your materialistic church not on your materialistic technology that all comes from the spirit honesty and uniqueness usually when i lay in my bed i use that as my honest time with god 
and I'm just you raw, pure, un, unfiltered, unjudgmental, what's right and wrong, honesty, how you feel, what you want, what you think you, if you do that every time, you will get God's voice and you will be changed every time. There's a uniqueness in your spirit though. You have to tap into it and find it. I notice mine is very poetic, very, and the beauty of the splendor that shimmers in the might of the kingdom of, I start talking like that and I'm not, and when I learn to exercise that I begin to feel God on a level that I don't know how to explain or describe. Remember, uniqueness and honesty. If you apply those to your spirit today, you will never be the same. You will experience the supernatural. You will be taken higher than what dope can take you. Drugs can give you a feeling, a temporary feeling that leads to eternal damnation. But the Holy Spirit can take you high. Now this, I don't know, in the past two weeks of my life, I sacrificed things that weren't really fully devoted to the Holy Spirit. They were giving me knowledge. They sounded good. I could pray in them. I could use my own gifts, my own likes in them and worship God. But they weren't purely focused, devoted, committed, connected to the Lord God. And I deleted them. I have subscribed to them. I got rid of them. And it has... Some things you realize in the spirit, you don't even have words for. The only thing you can do is make a sound. That's how you know that's a serious revelation. You can't even speak. You can only utter a sound. Because Paul said he went to the third heaven and he heard things that were beyond utterance, that were not worthy to be spoken. Like that's a realm that you have access to in the Holy Ghost. You just begin to utter sounds and musical notes instead of human language. That's, a whole, that's, a, that's, a, that's another level right there. You reach that level when you speak in your heavenly language. Do you know every gift God gives you has infinite potential in it? There are infinite reasons in what that gift can do in your life. There's not just three reasons, or there's only three reasons why you speak in tongues. No, 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 no. Who limited God? I want to know. I'd like to have a word. Who limited God? I want to know. Well, in the gift of tongues, it only activates three parts of your... No, God is infinite. When the gifts open, it opens in the infinite. There is no such thing as only level one, level two, level infinite. You want to know how you have no measures in your life, how you have no caps, no limitations? You say, I am an infinite. I am one with the infinite God. I talk like that all the time. and it, There are certain things you can say that will permanently activate your DNA, permanently change you. You will never, ever be able to give up on Jesus after you speak these things and claim them. There's so much power in God that we're afraid to claim. Just like you didn't know. And a lot of, I don't think a lot, a lot of people don't know. And they're afraid to say this. Do you realize you are sitting on the same throne as God? Oh, you shouldn't say that. You should. Well, if you're afraid to say that and to claim that, you will not reign in that power. The Bible says we are seated in heavenly places. Listen, listen now. Listen now. Please, before we go further, get out your baseball glove, please. I'm going to throw I'm going to throw a softball. I'm not going to throw it hard like the pitchers, the professional pitchers do. I'm going to throw it like an amateur. You don't have to listen if human beings think you're right. The Holy Spirit will let you know that you are right with what you speak is truth. You will feel your soul begin to rejoice. You will know that you know that you know, and this knowing and knowing and knowing will come upon you when you're not afraid. Listen, you got your glove out? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to go until you have your gloves out. So everybody, well, I see a bunch of people in the, and right now and they have their gloves out. There's people watching this. The Bible says we are seated in heavenly places. Listen now. We are seated in heavenly places. Listen, listen with Christ, not on the side of Christ, not underneath Christ, 
not above Christ. With Christ. Now, the other scripture that ties to that is, listen, listen now. Keep your baseball out. But I can only carry one ball at a time. No, you can't. The Holy Spirit just gave you a double glove. You just didn't catch it. You're gonna, if you listen to this, you're going to start receiving double portion revelations at one time. Wherever he is, we are. Did you catch that? Wherever he, listen, wherever he is, we, listen, listen to the last word, we are. If you never claim that, and it's in the word of God, you will never walk in its power. Your fear hinders you from claiming that. Your lack of wisdom thinking you're being humble hinders you from claiming that. So all these promises and all this power stored in the scripture is waiting for us to be claimed. Not for waiting for you to achieve it. It's waiting to be claimed. Who will claim this level? Who will claim this weapon to defeat the demonic foes? Who will claim this realm of glory? Who will claim my statues? Who will claim? Who will take? And behold, who will drink? Jesus said, whoever will drink, come. Do you know how powerful that is? He said, whoever will drink, come. Jesus would tell people, come. Everything I have to offer is yours. Come and drink. Come and sit and reign. Come and be the righteousness of God. Come and experience Yahweh. Oh, Jesus, that's deep right there, brother. You're probably on the ground right now shaking. Yeah, brother. You don't know the scripture because of your human mind. I don't care how many times you read it in your mind. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit opened their understanding so they can receive the word of God. Open their understanding. Open their mind. He opened their mind so they could understand the word of God. The Holy Spirit has to open your mind for you to understand the word of God. Understanding is a spirit. You can't understand this in your human mind. Understanding is realization, not figuring out in your mind and coming up with a calculation. That's a part of revelation. That's a part of sharing it. But the true is realizing. Realization. So this understanding turns into realization, which is the overall of the Lord. Not trying to figure out portions of God. We have risen in conviction. We have risen in knowing. We have risen in becoming. We have risen in realization. So wisdom talk, wisdom spoke with me one time. Oh, Jesus, I feel amazing. I'm starting to enter into that reverence mode where I'm reverencing God, fear the Lord. Remember, these are modes you enter into. You keep asking and asking and asking. God said, I already given it to you. You just got to come. You keep asking, Lord, take me to the corner store. You have a car, get in the car and drive. Well, in the spirit, you have a car, get in the car and drive. There's a lot of things I don't even much pray for anymore. I really now just intercede for other people and pray for other people. But because I've learned, I don't even really got to just, just pray for so many things like I used to. I have a car in the spirit and I can drive and take it. It's already mine. I don't have to pray for abundance. It's already mine. I just, more, more importantly, I have to just release what's already mine. Wealth is already mine. Promotion is already mine. I just have to release it and enter into it. Enter into the vaults of the Lord. Mm. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. You really want this power? Everything around you has to be pure. You gotta drink pure things, eat pure things, have pure music, purify all the evil books, pure, keep, sometimes you might have to go through a month, three month stage of just cleansing, detoxing, purifying. But remember, when you're in this presence of infinite eternity, time doesn't even matter no more, it doesn't even exist. You can go 400 years in the spirit right now. You can go back, I don't care, 40, 50 years of your life, Learn the lessons, get redeemed. He redeems the time. He redeems the time. Be rejuvenated. Get every. Stop worrying. Stop worrying about time. Now, listen, this is a sacrifice or this change. 
Look, I don't even much read that stuff no more. I just post it. That's step one knowledge. But right here, what we're doing now is step two knowledge. Ooh, thank you for showing me that, Jesus. I've been waiting years for that to happen and take place. I need to write that down. I'm on a different level now. And this is what I've been craving for, fasting for, hungering for, giving my money for, crying out for. God. Messenger. Listen, son. Listen, son. Listen. That's how I see. That's phase one. But this. Two times, wisdom. Acceleration. Because the Lord's saying to me right now, oh, God is changing my life like I want to be changed here. Because the Lord was saying, see, you're releasing what you've learned, what you're gained. But it's even greater when you just simply release me. <laughs> yes, Jesus. I needed to hear that. God just showed me that. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Help me. But um, we just entered into a childlike stage right now. That when I got that revelation, the whole atmosphere just changed, the level, the everything just changed, and I just went lower in the spirit. See, once you go higher in the things of God, but you experience the setback and the drawback of not staying low. If you stay high in God, you're just gonna fly and get your head chopped up. You have to stay high and low at the same time. go on the mountain but you come down you go high but you come down you have to stay and so when I fast what it does is breaks me from power and it only infuses me with more power but it breaks me from me and I get crushed and broken and it humbles me until right now I feel a new level of lowliness in my life I've never, remember the heights of God is not up here it's down here in lowliness It's in lowliness. Jesus said, I am lowly. He said, those that humble themselves like a child, a little child, low. He said, they will be called greatest in the kingdom. The lowly realm is the greatest in the kingdom. You want the greater realms? See, we always chase the wrong thing. We chase the paycheck without the work. But if we do the work, we get the paycheck. So if you want to go higher, you go lower. That's the location, the lever. Promotion is already up there, but you just got to learn how to access it. But yeah. Oh, we get to keep going. I'm excited. I thought God was going to say stop. Just being honest. Keep that where well, you're, Lord, speaking to me right now, where you're wholly being committed to me because you're supposed to fast from coffee. Now you've dedicated yourself to 100% my word, worship music, listening to preachers, not anything else, no mixes. So I can really get 100% flow in you. I can really get 100% connection with you. How many of us just are we're just 80% connected to God? You got to practice and exercise being 100% connected to God at all times. Practice that. Exercise that. And not to burst your bubble, but it's going to hurt. It's going to be a painful process, I assure you. Maybe God will make it easy for you. But for me, I'm going to tell you something. Let me give you a revelation. A long time ago, God used to rain so much power on me. I could run from the back of the neighborhood to the front without taking a huff puff. <gasps> I had so much energy. I had so much power. I thought I, I would worship God for eight hours at a time. I had so much. The Lord spoke to me one time. He said, is this enough? 
I mean, he, he didn't say, he said, is this too much for you? Let me know and I'll back off. He said something like that. And I was like, listen, Lord. And I told him straight up. And I have yet to back up from what I said. I said, I don't care how painful it is. I don't care if I feel like my bones are about to crash. My neck's about to snap open. Rain your power on me. And I would tell him that. He said, you're sure? I would tell him that. And I said, I can handle it. I, I've been telling him that same thing for over five years. And he has continued. But now I'm able to mend that power. I'm able to learn to use it and submit. See, that's true power. Not just screaming and yelling, but being able to take 7,000 levels of volt, uh, electricity. See, this is the true power of God. Being able to take 7,000 voltages of electricity and put it all in a small container, a small voltage, and preserve it. That's power, my friend. When you learn how to see power, my friend, is not just rising in God's power, shouting and screaming. I was like that because this power will change you, brother. True power is being able to wield God's power. And gentleness and softness, that's true power, my friend. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus, for allowing me to go. I want to go deep, Lord. Well, this part's about to go. I see the Lord directing me now. You can see where God's moving you to next. So you'll know it's God because it's too pure, it's too clear, and you, you just automatically know it's God. But here in this section, it's about to be the finale. And then we're going to go to the next section because God has put more extensions in my life for me to flow into deeper, deeper in the spirit, deeper in the spirit. So under the law of God, I just share and declare this power into you. And release the statues, the laws, the testimonies of Jesus to you. Just speak favor into your heart, your life, your mind, your soul. Your body, your heart. Just declare we will rise as champions in the Lord and never be the same. But this section launches us into a new pivotal movement in the Lord. May we increase like we never have and may we begin to see the miraculous and may we open our hearts to God and the momentum of His love flow in us. And may we change the world. Most importantly, as I said, let us never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen.